the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Tonight's meeting will be a powerful meeting. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. young man you take that fire right now in the name of Jesus you will step into new levels new dimensions of grace new levels and new dimensions of grace I hear in my spirit restoration 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 the mantle is coming on men. I see missing things returning to people. Restoration. Shabakata. Shagatabaratatosh. Restoration by the Spirit. Restoration. Help them, please. Restoration. Restoration. Kalaposokaya. Restoration of joy, restoration of peace. I prophesy it, I create it, I make it happen. I make it happen. I make it happen by 
say a set word restoration 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 Father let there be restoration strange testimony of divine restoration strange testimony of divine restoration I believe in the Lord and I believe that it's his will to give us miracles this night I believe with all my heart that it is God's will that no one will walk and go back the same way he came that's what I believe I believe it with all my heart Father, let everything that leaves your people today never return to them. Never return to them. Never return to them. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down for a few minutes if you can. Just sit for a few minutes. Please, the anointing oils. The Lord gave me very strange instruction tonight. Hallelujah. Before I minister, will be very, very fast, very fast, but there will be dramatic testimonies. Dramatic testimonies. While I was praying, I saw myself anointing people with oil. The Lord says, Do as you have seen. So, before I begin to pray, I'm going to pray on an anointed oil. God gave me an encounter during the end of the year he said I have multiplied my anointing and my grace upon your life you will see wonders in your midst, that's what God told me you will see wonders, not miracles wonders in your midst wonders in your midst for as you move I will move, that's what the Lord said as you move When God increases a man's anointing, it's not for himself. He increases his anointing because the Bible says, where sin abound, much more grace. God knows that the times that befall men are wicked times that will not need a casual anointing. Light me, Lord. Light my way. Light me, Lord. Like menorah. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Let me just talk on one thing and then we'll pray. Please be very sensitive to what God is doing. I'm not sure I can teach everything that I had planned for. I just plan to challenge us. But I'll just share one thing. There is a lady and a guy that the power of God will touch outside. Please bring them. I want to talk to them. A lady outside and a gentleman, two of them, the anointing of God will come mighty upon them. Mighty upon them. As it pays to walk with the Lord. It pays to walk with the Lord. You know why many people never carry the presence of God? We have deceived people for a long time that there is nothing to do to carry the presence of God. 
nothing can be further from that truth. There is a huge price. A huge price to carry the presence of God. Those who don't walk in the reality, unfortunately, are the ones who teach about it the most. And they teach all kinds of theories and grammar. And deceive people in the body of Christ that there's nothing to be done. Just believe. Are you joking? Everything that is of value has a price, brothers and sisters. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. You want to command signs and wonders, there is a huge price. The price is death. The price is death. The price is not negotiation. Only dead men carry the glory of God. The glory of God is not pure. Only dead men carry his glory. Only dead men carry his Ask that I declare. Lord, I bring your presence into the lives of these people. May their lives never be the same. I stretch my hands over them. I declare that this cause that has followed your family, I bring it to an end. The Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. It's not theory. It's not a book you write. It's a reality. It's not something you explain. I told us that the Bible says it's a year of trial. Remember the teaching. That there will be less talk. Less talk. God, God has said it again. God told me that there will be less talk. There's too much noise making in the body of Christ. Noise making. Excellent communications that carry no life, no power. So people go back with their problems. They keep getting intelligent in their brains. And no result to justify it. That's why we are singing that song. When his light comes upon you, the worst is that they will criticize you. But no one will deny the finger of God. Listen, it's not hard. It's because we men of God have lied to you. We gather you and make it look as if it's a fortune to get the hand of God. There is a price. The price for God's presence is not wearing suits. The price for God's presence is not learning Greek and Hebrew. Please hear me, especially if you're a pastor here. The price for God's presence is not protocol and gathering people and feeling like a big man. I say it again. The price for the glory is death. Except the corn of wood falls to the ground. Anyone can preach what he wants to preach about it. But brother, if you want to be used by God in this generation, I tell you the price is death. You don't, you don't do part-time with God and get his glory. Part-time nonsense is the reason why many people never find God. There is a search. You seek him like a treasure that you will die if you don't find it. Not a treasure that you do something else if you don't find it. You seek him as a treasure that you would die if you don't find him. That's the price for his glory. So don't let somebody tell you, every man, I can get to God. No, possibilities are defined by the sacrifices upon every man's altar. So don't let anyone fool you and say what any man can do, any other man can do. Theoretically true. But practically, my brother, no, sir. It's like saying any man can become a professor. You didn't lie. But any, everybody will not be a professor. There is a price. One of the things I want you to learn tonight is please may God grant you the grace to respect anointed people when you see them. Do you know why many people bring curses upon their lives? When a man of God has a track record with God, listen, let me, let me give you a, I don't know why I'm talking along this line. If this is all the encouragement before I begin to minister to you, some of the yokes upon the lives of people are not caused by, they are not caused by generational causes. 
They are caused by foolishness. Are we together now? Yeah. When, when you trivialize what God is doing in a man, you trivialize the investment that God has made upon that man. And that grace never blesses you. You open up yourself to woes and tragedies. For instance, there are some of our family members right now. The problem they are crying for, that they can up from city to city, paying money for prayer, praying money for deliverance, paying money for counseling, can be received freely if only a heart of honor and humility is in place. When I was on my way coming back, I saw many people sitting down outside and just smiling, admiring the crowds of people coming. And honestly, not because I'm the one preaching. I said, my God, can a man be this foolish? Will I ever see the presence and the glory of God close to me and not jump at it? There are people who started traveling day before yesterday. They don't even know where to stay. And they are just more than grateful they are in the presence of God. And there are others who are a minute walk away. It usually is like that. That's why people never receive. There are people, while I'm talking now, they are scattered all around Jesus. Say, wow, this guy. Maybe some will say he has charm. Go and get it. Get the charm that produces this result. You think it's easy to get a charm? May God grant you the fruit that when you see God in a place and a thing, you plunge in hands. Not that you sit down be a spectator and allow your life to waste. This year is not the year you should play with any opportunity God needs. Because on the other side of God's presence is a fierce, fierce 2007 waiting for disobedient people. Like Goshen and Egypt. Are you hearing the cries of the glory? Are you hearing the lamentation, the hopelessness? People are confused. They don't even know what to do with their lives again. Charms are not working again. Jobs are not working again. Everything is going on. And God calls a solemn assembly so that he will step in and bless you. Very good. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh, Lord, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Sing it one more time. I look to Yahweh. I want to start my teaching tonight with a simple question. Brothers and sisters, help me answer this question. Why do people, why do born again families, why do communities and territories and individuals continue to walk in a life of perpetual failure, perpetual oppression, in spite of all the opportunities? And the anointings that are available. It's a tragic situation. To have men and women. Well-meaning believers who love and fear God sincerely. Never have anything work well in their life. I identified a few reasons. And I want you to learn this very quickly. Because we are going to pray. Please, can you take this anointing? Just, can you take it and keep it here? Is that okay? Please, it's, it's nothing fetish. I'm just, it's just an instruction. Just, just soak the glory. Just drop it here. Thank you. Listen, why 
do these things happen to me? Number one, very quickly. The first reason I identified and I wrote it here is, it may be a long sentence, but just listen carefully. The conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs. The conscious exclusion of Jesus, not God, not God, Jesus in their lives and affairs. The number one reason why certain people will never have a testimony. The conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and their affairs. I don't mean they are not born again. That's not what I'm saying. The conscious exclusion, like you want to have a serious meeting, then you tell somebody, please, can you go outside? The conscious, willful exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs. Are we together now? You see, there is this arrogance and overdue of our intellectualism I'm not against intellectual prowess you should know that I'm an advocate of mental development and so on and so forth but listen to me over dependence on our abilities our connection our education our wisdom business skills etc these things make us to consciously exclude Jesus in our lives Usually we include Jesus only when we think we are not trained enough for what we are supposed to do. Oh, I went to school. Doesn't Jesus know I'm a master's holder? Jesus, wait. This is the issue of intelligence. When we get to spiritual issues, we bring you. And then he steps out. Because he's, he's a very, very gentle man. Pride over dependence on our ability. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 and 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Listen. And lean not on your own understanding. Right? The next verse says, In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Verse 7 says, Do not be wise. Be not wise in your own eyes. It says, Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. What is the evil? Depending on your strength. Let me tell you why God is humbling so many people. This arrogance of being self-made, self-made degree holder, self-made doctor, self-made professor, self-made millionaire, self, there is nobody that is self-made. Everybody is spirit assisted. Whether they know it or will accept it or not. Are we together? The first reason why many people never get God's assistance. Over dependence on our ability. Oh, my power, my might. I built this great ministry. I have sons and daughters to show for it. I built so, 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 and so. I'm an intelligent man. Everybody tells me that attitude excludes you will never find the hand of God. That way. Hear what I'm saying. You may not like what I'm saying, but just pay attention. Over dependence on our abilities. When the miracle happens, then we religiously come and say, Lord, I give you glory. But even you, you know, you are just doing the testimony so that men will hear what you have done. Not because you were sincere with giving God glory. It's God's will. That I may decrease. That she alone may increase. Huh? All my qualification, all my business acumen, all my parenting skills, all my CEO mentality. When you come before God, you pack those things, box them and drop them and glorify his name. It's the reason why many cannot worship him. Is the reason why many cannot do anything because to them they are superstars and everywhere including a church is the stage. Apostle Joshua Selman, did you see him as he came? Did you see how people were running up and down? And we stupidly take God 
out of our ministry. You see that? Yeah. That's what a lot of people have done. You left seeking God and became a CEO of a church and you started running it by yourself. That's why it's killing you. Let me tell you something with God. One thing I know about God is not that I'm told God is a jealous God. I don't know how you want to interpret it. Use Hebrew and Greek is still the same thing. God is a jealous God. The jealousy of God is the dimension of him that fiercely fights anything that attempts to displace him. Ask Lucifer what happened to him. There was war even in heaven. The conscious exclusion. Oh, I'm healthy. Why should I pray? I'm healthy. Why should I fast? So we have all this fire brigade approach. Only when things go wrong, we now come and bribe God with money. We bribe God with tight. We bribe God with our shoe. And the time we wrap something and say, God, just take and solve my problem. And God is saying, am I that cheap to you? Is this all you know about me? Oh, I'm a business tycoon. I'm a multi-millionaire. I have, I have all kinds of companies running everywhere. And then, by the time your wisdom fools you, you now come and say, oh God, God, you, you know, ah, ah. You said you were a tycoon. Tycoons are intelligent people. You continue. Listen, when other men are priding in themselves, you better know why God blesses you. And be outspoken about it. Have a testimony of the love and the faithfulness of God. Are we together? Conscious exclusion of God. The embarrassment, still on that same point. The embarrassment of the need for assistance and dependence of God, on God. The embarrassment that comes with acknowledging your need to be helped. There are many people who like to say, nobody helped me. Nobody helped me. I did it by myself. Nobody helped me. I rose from rags to riches by myself. I became a millionaire by myself. I became anointed by myself. No man of God did that on me. I was rolling under the floor in the presence of God. Then an angel appeared to me and said, son, stand up. From today, I anoint you over this and that and we talk those foolish things. Most people find it embarrassing to say their lives are a product of many contributions. We think that the moment you acknowledge, ah, at this point in my life, God used it to me to help me. At this point in my life, God used Sam to help me. It makes you cheap. So we rather trivialize all the help and we join God in the equation. Okay, God, I gave my life to you. That's all right. That's your own honor. Enjoy that one. But this one, wisdom, I, I have it. A man can receive nothing until it is given to him. Have you read that? A man can receive nothing that's why many people, the lady will come and say, look, by God's grace, so it's not pride, but am I not beautiful? And you find out that you never married. Nobody will even tell you good money. And you are wondering why. With all this beauty, you see that the brothers are blind, they leave me, they are not blind. But there is a God that gives husband and wife. And you have excluded that God out of your life because you think you are okay. Or a brother who got a small job, 150,000. I say, God forbid, I can't marry any kind of lady. I've, I've, been, I've, I've paid my price. I have 150,000 naira job. Let me describe the kind of lady. And God says, This is a rich, a stupid, stupid boy who does not know how God assists men to rise. Then they now threaten you that they are going to downsize people. And they, you, you are shocked to find out that although you are, you are brilliant, your name is there. You are about to go. God will say, Use your power and your might. And keep yourself there. Total dependence on Jesus. Outspoken dependence on Jesus. Not that you say they know. We don't know. Say it. Let your life show it. Let your ringtone show it. Let everything show it. You know this Christian thing. I don't want to put it on my head. You better put it on your head. That is the symbol of safety. You better put it on your head. In this wicked world now, put it on your head clearly so that you'll be free. 
Are we together? I don't know about you, but I depend on you. I depend on you. If God does not assist me, no man can assist me. If God does not help me, he said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hill. From when, how can I write the equation of my life and then add God? I will not even add God. He's the Alpha Omega. If there is anything to add, maybe it's me that somewhere out, he will even allow me to add and say, okay, and my addition is my alignment. Are we together? Please, I want you to repent tonight. Especially some of us here and there that have results here and there in our lives. In business, like that gentleman who came out smiling, that he, he made one video. You see that? It's a wonderful testimony. You can now stand up and say, no, I must get my own one video. And then start the journey of pain in your life. If God does not give a man anything, you can't have it. You can't have it. You have to understand this. That's why people don't get saved. Let me tell you. That's why people don't get saved. And you mean, if you point someone here, and tell him there is a multi-million naira business in Abuja you want to connect it with. Will he be too busy? He won't be too busy. The wife will say, honey, but I thought we were supposed to have a time together. I say, which time I will slap you now? Is it not with the money we'll have a time together? Let's go to Abuja. Because you consider it to be valuable. Valuable. So when the house of God becomes something you have to advise yourself to go, it's a sign you are excluding God out of your life. Are we together now? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. He didn't go alone. Let us go. Let us go. I've said it again. Please, if you're a parent here, hear me. As much as God grants you grace, involve your children in your conviction. Especially if your children are as small as this are one, are, are little children. Are we together? Don't leave the children with nanny and say they used to make noise. They should make noise. It's better to make noise in the presence of God than keep them at home and allow a strange spirit enter them and begin the journey of pain in your life. Let them come and sleep here. Nobody's complaining. I'd like you to pray one minute while you are seated and say, Lord, you are not one of those important things in my life. I repent for just adding you. After doing everything I think is the reason why my life is moving, I now add you to feel spiritual. Lift your voice and say, I repent. I repent of that pride. I repent of that pride. I acknowledge you. Listen, the Bible says, except the Lord builds a house. Except the Lord builds a ministry. Except the Lord builds a family. Except the Lord builds a business. They labor in vain. He didn't say they will not do it. They labor in vain. Pouring water in the basket. Pouring water in the basket. It will never fool. Pour the water in the whole world in a basket. No miracle will make it fool. So that's the first reason. Still on point one. Let's look at the scripture God showed me. Isaiah 31, verse 1 to 3. Media, is it possible? Can we have it? Isaiah 31, verse 1 to 3. God gave me a sound warning that I should give it to us. Not like a threat or something, but I think it's an advice that is very instrumental to us. Isaiah 31, from verse 1 to 3. Let's just hurry up before they find it. The danger of trying to use the world's way of doing things to get God's results. Are we together now? Still part of point one is an addition I noted here and I must explain it. The danger of using the world's formula and expecting God's result. It does not happen. The world has its way of getting money. The world has its way of parenting. The world has its way of getting fame. Listen. The world has its way of, li of, of living long. The world has its way of understanding. When you come to God, the kingdom of God is an entirely different system. The Bible says you are in the world. 
but not of the world. Right? Isaiah 31, you can write it and go and read it. He said, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Woe to them that go down to Egypt. Egypt is the place of captivity. The dark world. This includes going to Habalis. Please look up. Let me talk to us. Are you not amazed, Jimmy, at the rate at which people, Christians, run to the village, run to Habalis? We join God and we join a little of something they give you like a belt on your waist. You are still, I don't care even if it's Jesus that is written on it. A herbalist is a herbalist. They gave you something. They said, during your exam, you should just take it. You have to stand by one in the afternoon. Exactly one. Take it with your right hand. It's nonsense. I don't care even if you are reciting whatever. Be careful. Everything that is of God is consistent with this one. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Very, very important. Woe to them who go down to Egypt for help. God has his way of doing things. You want to build a house. The world has his way of building a house. The kingdom has his way of building a house. You want to access wealth and prosperity. The world has his way of doing things. Many believers go down to Egypt and we try to access help whereas there is no help in Egypt. For 430 years they were in Egypt, there was no help. Until they left Egypt and they began to walk. Are we together? I'm not against enlightenment but some of this some of these junk materials we read all around that attempt to suggest facts and figures that negate the word of God yet we adopt them and we call it civilization please look at me look at me let me have your attention I don't care the word of God transcends every generation whether you are young whether you are old there are irrefutable truths that defines the standards of God say amen Woe to them who go down to Egypt for help. You want to build a house. You are putting yourself under pressure. The world says go to the bank and go and collect loan. Correct? Go and collect loan. And you don't inquire from God. You run and go to the bank. They give you a loan. The next day an armed robber comes and puts a gun. And says you better bring out that loan. I was in the bank. Bring everything out. And then you have two loans to pay the one you need to build the house and all of that and the journey starts and at the end of your life you have high blood pressure you have stroke the world says if you want to keep a wife beat her beat her once let her see you beat her then she will know you are man enough that's the world's way now you are born again but those advices are still coming once in a while your uncle says that advice i gave you i think he's working are we together The Bible says the divine health is a possibility. I'm not against medicine and all of that. But divine health is a possibility. And for you, you have never tried to stretch your faith for once. To believe God and say, look, I can live here. Are we together? The Bible says favor is possible. The world's fashion of favor is bribe and corruption. You force it. Go to them who go down to Egypt. There is a way God finances and builds his church. You didn't find out. And so you play gimmicks on people. All kinds of gimmicks on people. And you find out that every Sunday, every Saturday, you are always on deficit. God gave you a child. There is a formula for paying the school fees of the child. Don't complain that there's no money. Go to God and find out. Lord, I was pregnant for nine months. I'm aware that there are women who have not been able to give birth. How did you design funding the destiny of this child? Please hear what I'm saying because this is a very serious issue. How many husbands and wives come together? How many young people, how many leaders sit down and say, look, we are confused. Let's get God in this picture. Lord, 
we are absolutely confused. We need you to step in. They say, let's deliberate. Then later, when it gets to hard, they say, okay, let's pray in tongues for five minutes. God, who lied to you that adding God to your life is a minus? Who lied to you that adding God to your business is a minus? Who lied to you, listen, that adding God to your relationship is a minus? Who deceived you that adding God to your church is a minus? Adding God to your friends and driving out the bad ones is a minus. Oh, I don't want to lose him. You better lose him. If, if adding God to his life is what will make him to go, that's a sign that you have been delivered. Please hear what I'm saying. There are people seated hearing me. You have never given your heart to Jesus Christ. You have never. You've heard preachers speak again and again. Every time they talk, you just sit down outside and say, God, am I was touched by ah, ah. See how this guy is really talking about God. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't mean to scare you, but let me just tell you one truth that we have not had for a long time. Hellfire is clean. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people there, some left this morning. As you were coming for Koinonia, some people left. They are there right now as we speak. Preach whatever you want to preach. But I can tell you one thing. Hell is very, very good. So you can be as arrogant as you want to be. And say I'm an atheist. I went to America and I spent two, two years. I went to Harvard. I, I, that's alright. You are permitted to carry your foolishness for as long as it will last. But I can tell you one thing. Only a fool will say in his heart. There is no problem. Please hear me. Some of us are parents. And I say with all due respect. There are many fathers and there are many mothers, some listening to me by radio. Your family is nostalgic because as the priest of the home, you have refused to bring God. When your wife is praying, you now say, honey, make sure you pray for me. You just enter the blanket. No. no. Let me challenge any young man here planning to marry. If you are not more spiritual than the woman you want to marry, you are in trouble. You better catch up. Join prayer ban on Tuesday. Join have a personal prayer time and double up. And I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Your spirituality defines everything. I wish above all things that you prosper even to the degree that your soul prospers. What shall it profit a man? The Bible says if you gain the whole world, if you have all the ministries in the world and at the end of it, lose your soul. Praise the Lord. So there are people seated hearing me really need to ask yourself this question um, have I been saved am I born again I know I came for healing I came for a miracle I know I'm 65 years old I know I'm 12 years old are you born again have you really brought Jesus to your life an open invitation to say Lord I'm tired of mismanaging my life my intelligence is failing me woefully. I come to you I come to you as a child will run to his father right the prodigal son came to himself and said look how many hired servants has my father i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have seen against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me now as one of your servants and the bible says while he saw him coming afar off he ran embraced him kissed him and restored and put back the seed the evil in the world is too much for any man to be living his life without Christ. That you took beer and drove yourself from Kaduna to Zaria is the mercy of God. You keep trying it. One day you just open your eyes and find out you are not in the world. Disrespect for God and his values. I'm going to make an altar call now. We need to make it. The atmosphere is right for an altar call. Two altar calls in one. Please pay attention. Two altar calls. Just carry the lady gently. You are here seated listening to me. Those online, pay attention to Jesus is calling you. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It says, Take upon me my yoke and learn of me. 
for I am lonely in heart. Right? He says, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. The one you are carrying is killing you. Two sets of people. One, those who are saying, man of God, as you are speaking, the Holy Spirit is telling me, I need Jesus. Not I need God. Not I need God. God is many things to many people. There is no other name given unto man by which men must be saved. God does not save men. There is a name. Jesus. Jesus. Are we together? This westernization that has made everything called God. There are people God is a donkey. There are people God is a tortoise. There are people God is a small image somewhere looking like something. But we are talking about Jesus. The name that is above all names. When he is lifted then he will draw all men to himself. The second category of people who are coming out here are those who are saying, man of God, sincerely, I've responded to an altar call, but I cannot say my life is a reflection of the will of God. I don't care about the house of God. I don't care about the things of God. My children should do anything if they want to do. I do anything I want to do. I watch anything I want to watch. I do anything I want to do. Please, let's save time. I'm going to count one to five. Nobody's closing his eyes. There are people in all the overflow scattered around. As you hear my voice, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come right in front here and say, man of God, I need you to talk to, 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 to pray for me. One. Run like there's fire on the mountain. If you are too big, please go back. Two. Come and stand and passionately cry before God. Three. Passionately cry before God. Lord, I've come to you from the depth of my heart. I can't keep playing games with you. Keep coming. Are you running? Leave your friend if he's trying to throw you back. There's a spirit in him that will soon be casted out. If your friend holds you back, I assure you there is a spirit. Leave him and run and come. Don't say, I came with my girlfriend. I came with my boyfriend. Run to Jesus with all your heart. Keep clapping, please. Motivate them as they're coming. Man of God, it's as if you've been talking to me. Yes, you are right. You are the one I've been talking to. And Jesus is calling you. Rush to him. Say, Lord, I'm tired. I, I can't keep fighting this for long. I got admission into APU and I became something else. I, I became a graduate and I became something else. I'm not ashamed. I'm coming to you. It is like an award ceremony. You are not closing your eyes. Please run to Jesus. The Lord is still telling me there are people. In the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Come and stand before him and shame the devil over your destiny shame the devil over your destiny listen many of us standing here are young people one day you are going to be a father one day you are going to be a mother the father and the mother you hate right now that made you got into your lifestyle they had an opportunity when they were young they ignored jesus but embraced education so they became graduates without christ and they married without christ although the wedding was done in the church and the disaster is the values of the kingdom are not reflected in our family. The average young man seated here, in the next five to ten years, he will be married. Your conviction is what you are going to transfer to your home. Every stupid man today was a stupid young man. Correct? He married and just wore suit on that stupidity and took it to his home. We are sick and tired of a godless society. A society that has no respect for God. We, we are pushing God out and saying, look, look, you know, I'm, I'm too fine for all this, this church thing. No. Addiction is the trend. Addiction for God. Outspoken addiction. Listen, I salute you, ladies and gentlemen. Don't come out as if you are going to the graveyard. Nobody's morning. It's a thing of joy. I'm about to lead you to make the greatest decision in your life. There are many of you years after now you will be leading others. Ladies, you are standing here for the sake of your children. One day they will look at you and say, Mommy, thank you for giving your life to Jesus when you were 21. Thank you 
for not joining this nonsense that is producing tears there's no magic about a great future you must run to jesus like there's fire on the mountain and for those of us who are sitting down that you are sitting down doesn't mean you should not be here because there are people that are still supposed to be here but while you are seated you must say lord make me serious with you an addiction for you an addiction for you an addiction for you some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears yeah I'm not here to condemn you. No, no. With all the love in my heart, if I had my way, I would hug every one of you. Because you have made a decision that will save a generation. Everyone who rejects Christ has implicated his generation. Because you can only give what you have. Those of you in front, please lift your right hand seriously. Lift it high to the heavens. And say after me, Lord Jesus. Please say it from your heart. Say it again, Lord Jesus. Don't worry, you can cry, it's alright. Lord Jesus. Don't baby, look at me. Look at me. I love you. There is a boy that disturbs you. Eh? Send that boy a text and say, Joshua Selma asks you to send him a text. You never come near you again. Because you love God and God wants to use you. Hmm? You keep loving God and that boy keeps, I don't know who he Drive him far from your life. Tell him I said so. In Jesus name. Huh? So you pray that prayer. Say after me Lord Jesus. I love you. With all my heart. This night. I have heard your word. And I come to you. Asking you to forgive me. Asking you to cleanse me. I believe. I can be better. Than I am now. So I don't fight you again. Come into my heart. It belongs to you. Take everything. That is mine. And make it yours. Use me. For your glory. Every condemnation. Every guilt. Upon my life. Lives now. And forever. In Jesus name. Keep your hands lifted. I want to pray for you. Father. Look at the ones you died for. They have come genuinely and openly to express before your people a commitment to love you and a commitment to live for you. Father, I pray that you honor their sincerity in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon your life and from today, the appetite you used to have, you will no longer have it forever. I release grace upon you to drive some people from your life. And I release grace upon you to invite others into your life. I decree and declare that any association, I don't care how long they have been with you. And don't favor the cause of the kingdom. May today be your party with them forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision. Now please hold on. I want you to walk. The service is still on. Very quickly and you'll be back. Two instructions. Please listen. One, you will follow that lady when I'm done talking and we're going to have your details. Please make sure you give your accurate details, your name and your number and whatever information. We need it because it will help us to be able to follow you up. Number two, and please let this be an announcement to the whole house. As a general rule, every time you are born again, the moment you are born again, automatically, you are a member of the prayer department for one month. Automatically. Are we together? When you are born again, so that for those of us who brought them now, if any of your loved ones is among the people, you encourage them. Automatically, for the next one month, you are a member of the prayer department. It's a model we have used from the onset of this ministry. When people get born again, the next thing is to give them an opportunity to have a kingdom community. Once they have a community of like-minded people that love God, they will have the strength to be able to shake up the things that are limitations. But if you leave them alone, sooner or later, the pressure will be too much on them and they will go back. Are we together now? So please, the prayer department, four to six at Rema Chapel. Rema Chapel is just across. For those of you who are not domiciled in Zaria, no problem. When you get your various ministries or places, you can always connect with living churches around and then be part of the prayer team at least for a month. It will build your spirit, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and then you begin to walk 
understand spiritual things and then from there your growth continues the lord bless you in the name of jesus please go ahead and follow the lady please you should create multiple points for them I appreciate them everyone if i told you receive your job you will clap with all your heart Keep clapping till they go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, those coordinating them, coordinate them very fast. There should be multiple systems so that you coordinate them very fast and then they'll be back to come and catch up with the service. There are quite a number of them, so please, if they need some hands, we should have a few people assist them very quickly. Number two, the second reason why people continue a life of hardship and misery. Second reason, quickly, number two. Is ignorance and disobedience to God's principles ignorance and disobedience to God's principles will be very fast please just five minutes let's wrap this up very quickly so that we can begin to pray ignorance and disobedience to God's principles Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 it says the labor of the fool wearied every one of them because he does not know the road to the city not because there is no road he does not know it Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 ignorance and disobedience to god's principles write one more scripture ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 we may not have time just write them you can go and read them during your personal time with god ignorance and disobedience to god's principles look up please you know that one of the mandates that God has given us as a ministry is to teach men the principles of the kingdom. I am, I am obsessed and passionate about helping believers understand the systems in the kingdom and how to walk through those systems and experience victory in their lives. So ignorance and disobedience is very costly. Number three, please, quickly. Number three. The third reason why people go through perpetual hardship hardship in their life is demonic oppression the reality of demonic oppression write it down Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 the reality of demonic oppression demonic forces are real the activity of the dark world is real the Bible did not leave us in confusion as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness first john chapter 5 verse 19 first john chapter 5 verse 19 he says we are of god and the whole world lieth in wickedness the condition to experience the the fierce wickedness in this world is that you are born you know um hold on there is there is a popular adage or cliche that people have all around the moment there is any kind of demonic intrusion they say who did i offend you've had that statement who did I offend though? I didn't offend it. I left the village peacefully. Look, he said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. You know the meaning of that? I was never given an opportunity to choose whether I want the devil to oppress me or not. The moment you are born, that reality implicates you. At once. Do not ever trivialize the fact that the dark world is still at work in our days at work does not mean in dominion at work means there is a consistent attempt by the forces of darkness to if allowed jeopardize every part of your christian life and every part of your christian experience finances family career education spiritual life every area satan will not leave any stone unturned see that it destroys you john 10 10 says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he said but i am come 
that ye may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18. Paul himself speaking. He says, once and again I desire to come unto you, but Satan hindered us. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18. But Satan hindered us. Satan can hinder men. That's why God puts a miracle service like this. To come and break down that, that system that he has built over the lives of people. I gave us an admonition earlier on while speaking and I want to repeat it. Never consult mediums, the occult, and so on and so forth for help. No. Never consult mediums, listen, the occult, the dark world, all kinds of extraterrestrial, astral, transcendental activities in an attempt to receive help. Jesus said, I am the door. Every other person who comes came through the window. I am the door. I am the door. When you come in through the door, you are safe. You come in through the window, there are side effects. Two scriptures. Oh, I wish it could be projected, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the whole. Um, Leviticus chapter 20 verse 6. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 6. To play the harlot after them I will even set my face against that soul and I will cut him from off among his people people who consult what familiar spirits people who consult mediums occultic activities right many of them parading as different things you go to your village you enter one room they say sit down we want to do something for you. Incisions all around for protection. Say, eat this razor blade. Anybody that touches you, that razor blade will strike you. Demonic activities. They concoct one kind of drink and they tell you, take it. And recite all kinds of things. The Bible says, whoever does that, I personally, I will set my face against it. Ah, but apostle, I've done it already. You are welcome to the miracle service. That's why you will be delivered. That's why you will be sent free. From all of that to wives who put their husbands in bottles for correct behavior. To husbands who put their wives all kinds of, of things people have. People have arrows in their ha homes and, and, and weapons that are, are demonic with, with charms. Let's be sincere. Things you hide under your carpet. You are just sitting down. You see strange men enter your house to slaughter all kinds of animals. They wake you in the middle of the night. All that consult mediums. All that consult mediums. Some persons may be listening to me online. Let, let me tell you, when God convicts you, adjust. Some of us are sincere, but our families, especially those of us who are coming from other faiths into the Christian life, or automatically you need to be prayed for. Automatically. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10 and 11. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Quickly please. We we'll trust God for a very quick walk tonight. Thank God by his grace we've made the altar call. Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 and 11. If you are not there just listen. There shall not be found among you anyone who maketh his son, parents, listen, or daughter pass through the fire. Or who use it divination. Or an observer of times. Or an enchanter. Or a witch. Or a charmer. Zarya's um, city. Where are we? Or a consulter of mediums. 
listen, I'm listing them. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. Next verse says, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Men pass through strange fires. Necromancy. Transcendental meditation. Astral travels. All kinds of extraterrestrial demonic activities. The Bible warns. This is Africa. And I understand. I'm not an American speaking. I've told you my story. Don't think that I was born out of a Bible. My God. There is almost no family here that is innocent. Tra just trace it just one generation after you. Someone worshipped something somewhere. Or didn't receive Christ and was serious. So it's still the same thing. Somebody was involved somewhere. And many people have been victims of those kinds of things. Hallelujah. Demonic powers are real. Their agenda to stop the purposes of God over your life are real. But one thing the Bible says is that the light shines in the darkness. Hallelujah. And it says the darkness cannot comprehend. That's why I know that every force that has held anyone's life today, in the name of the Son of the living God, it must give way. The last reason why do people remain under the yoke, the fierce yoke of oppression? The last reason, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. The last reason I'll give tonight, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. Yes, we are social beings, but brothers and sisters, we are also spiritual beings. Every man must be empowered. Jesus himself told them, tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Tarry, tarry. Don't be in a rush. Tarry until you have an evidence that can keep darkness away. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. 6 verse 10, Ephesians. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Finally, brethren, finally, koinonia, be strong in the Lord, not in yourself. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day, right? That the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and the yoke shall be taken away from your neck and the burden shall be destroyed because this is the singular reason why burdens are destroyed. Because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Do not reject empowerment. Listen. Empowerment is not for men of God. Are we together? Empowerment is not for those doing church and ministry and evangelism. Empowerment is not for leaders. Empowerment is for every believer. Every believer. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is your basis for establishment. You cannot live in today's wicked world without empowerment. Apostle Joshua Selman does not guarantee to be there for you every time you need him. But there is an anointing you can receive from the Holy Spirit. Standing in partnership with the Lord will raise a standard against him. I believe in running to men of God to help you and pray for you. But there is no man of God that gives you guarantee of 100% attention. It's impossible. There are times you can call me and I'm sleeping. Why? Because I'm human. But there is a keeper of Israel who neither sleeps nor slumbers. And the Bible says that he's willing. That outpouring of power. Part of the things you must trust God for tonight is an empowerment. An empowerment against fear. An empowerment against all kinds of oppressions of darkness. Fear. Right? Perfect love. Cast out fear. For fear has torment. There are many of us who need empowerment. You are afraid. Just to go from here to Kaduna, you are praying in tongues all through the car. Not praying in tongues of faith, just fear. You want to nod your head and rest it into the driver, just want to say, Driver, be careful, oh, please. Fear. Fear makes us suspect everyone. You come to someone's house, they put food and you look at it. I say, No, they, they put spoon here. Why is this person? This person wants to kill me. Fear. You need an empowerment. If you don't say, I, I'm old. 
Don't be afraid. You are now a man. No, there's no such thing as a man. A man means you have an anointing. Hello? A man means you have what? No matter how old you are, gentlemen, listen to me. If this thing is not of you, you are not yet a man. Because gone are the days where you fight with horses and chariots. Someone stands and speaks. And a wicked arrow lands upon your life with all your energy and physical stature. Makes rubbish and nonsense out of you. The woman who makes incantation, you can beat her physically. But she will call you from Italy to come and die in your village. Men are men who have power. Power with God. Power with God. Power with God. They invoke a charm against you before they finish their death. That's the registration to me that not every word is fake. Come on now. They bring your picture as they, as they show it. The fire they are trying to invoke comes out from the picture and burns the face of every devil to ashes. And you are not praying. It's not like you are praying at home. Maybe you are even cheating. What is working? My head. My head. My, my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The anointing is powerful mystery. It's a mystery till we get to heaven we will understand. The anointing is not falling down and shaking. The anointing is not people moving around. Those are just effects. Boy, the anointing is a force. A force that works. You speak with the anointing, you get results. You speak because you are shouting, you have some truth. See that? You make bold claims without the anointing. They visit you. You make bold claims with the anointing, whether day or night, you are still in control. How terrible are thou in thy ways? Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. In the name of Jesus from tonight, some of you, as you are going back home, you are not even saying anything. As you are going back to your house, it's an announcement to the spiritual climate of your territory. You are saying, no more, no more, no more. Nobody passes with all this wicked spirit and then it lands on you. No, I'm not, I'm not a dumping ground. They don't cast a demon from a crusade ground and it's moving through arid regions and just sees me and lands on. Don't think I'm joking. Demons still find men. You come out fine and return back with a fierce spirit on you and find out that you are suddenly getting angry. You were not like that. You are an angry person. You could never insult your husband. But something comes and says, everybody is a human being. No, a stranger has found entrance into your life. Ah, I'm born again. No demon can live in me. Please keep quiet. You are a spirit. You live in a body. Connecting your spirit and your body is a soul. Very big space for any amount of demons to stay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take it in serious. There are some habits people, you cannot use resolution to stop. Oh man of God, I love God, but I just sit down and once I'm on my laptop, the next thing I'm watching, I can't help it. No, 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 no. It's not about trying to help it. There is an anointing that must stand up on your life to because it's a spirit. Fill me up.
please quickly pick me make sure you are praying it's over I declare it it's my year of trial Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Goodness. I tell you, strange things are already happening inside and outside. This was the instruction the Lord gave me. That at the point this oil touches the head of everyone, then we begin to speak dramatic miracles, dramatic deliverances. Bring them out. Lift your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of the Living God, everyone online and here by the mystery of this oil, any stranger, Kabataya, any covenant, every wicked spirit manipulating the destiny of anyone, I decree and declare right now. By the fire of the spirit, let there be deliverance right now, inside and outside. Yokes, inside and outside. I stand upon this oil. I stand upon this place. I decree and declare anyone under any demonic manipulation. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I command the spirits, I command the devils, of you go from their lives now, of you go from their lives now, bring them out. Lift your hands. At the count of three, you will shout Jesus. My God, I see massive deliverance outside. Massive deliverance outside freedom for people and families at the count of three that's all I want you to do thank you Jesus let there be complete deliverance one two shout it now three Jokes be destroyed Jokes be destroyed every spirit every force every spirit Every thought, every spirit, every thought, every spirit. Lift your hands. The spirits that cause failure, that everything you do, you don't succeed. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command them to leave you now. Leave you now. Leave you now. The spirit of failure. The spirit of failure. The spirit of failure. Lift your hands. My God, I want to pray for students because I'm seeing like a blue flame. There is a spirit that which haunts the academics of students you are a student here get ready liberty comes to you at the count of three one two three leave them right now leave them right now they are academics oh, they have not been able to pass they have not been able to graduate i command that spirit you must go now you must go now Lift your 
lift your hands. I don't know what force of darkness is responsible for bad luck in the lives of men. Simple things that should work out, never work out. Now in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, whoever is a victim of that oppression, as I speak now, let the fire of the Holy Ghost land upon your life right now. Land upon your life right now. Land upon your life right now. Help them please. Bad luck. Lift your hands. I tell you, there are so many miracles happening. Listen. Listen. I want to pray. I want to pray for men and women. Inside and outside. Listen to me. Do you know hardship is a cause? Hardship is more than poverty. Poverty is absence of money. Hardship is a hard life. No matter how high you rise, your life becomes hard. Lift your hands and pray for families, not just individuals. So the power of God will come upon you for your family. I'm standing here and the Lord is asking me to face the minister's seat and stretch my hands. Every spirit of hardship, every spirit of hardship, every spirit of hardship, I command freedom. I command freedom. Now I turn to the congregation. At the count of three, shout Jesus and that devil must leave your family. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Help that lady. Go, 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 go. Hardship. 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 I command you. In the name of Jesus. I command you. You must go. I command you. You must go. You are a spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. Who is Veronica? Veronica. Veronica. Just leave them. We are praying. All those under the anointing, I set you free now. I command those devils, leave them forever. Leave their families forever. Strangers, go right now. The Bible says they will run when they hear his voice out of their hiding place. Therefore, I command every stranger in anyone's life and destiny. It's time for you to live and never return. Veronica, you are Veronica. Where are your parents? I'm seeing a light. Is your mother here? She's in Saria. That's what I mean. Right here. Go and tell your family that God is bringing a major breakthrough. I'm seeing crying all over. But I'm prophesying to you that a, a breakthrough, a new chapter opens for the family in the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen. I'm just going to speak to a few people. But before I pray, I want you to check yourself. There are people you will check yourself and the pain is gone. You check yourself and there is a miracle. Run where you are. Don't sit down. The moment you find out there is a miracle, run. Pastor Jimmy will be here. Immediately run. We'll just take a few testimonies and then I'll minister healing very quickly. We have to be faster. Our time is gone. Who are these people? You are all Veronica. Please look at me. There's witchcraft in your family. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Don't let it go right now. Over her and her family, I cause witchcraft completely in the name of Jesus Christ. Is your sister here? Where is she? Sister, are you here? Quickly, please come. Come and hold her hands. I see a fight for the destiny of the people in this family. And God wants to set you free now. I stretch my hands. You are holding your hands. Representing the family. I break every altar. Responsible for hardship and pain in your family. And I declare right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
that as my hand comes on both of you, let there be the beginning of strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus, God is giving people miracles. Are you giving Jesus praise? Come on, Koinonia. Make sure they confirm you and check you. God is touching people. Touching people. There is a lady. There is a lady you came here since 29th December. You have been pleading non-stop. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Hallelujah. We're going to do two things concurrently. Your prayer request, did you come with them? Or you forgot? Please bring them out. Always come with your prayer request when you come for the miracle service. Now, ushers, quickly, please collect the prayer request. If you are trusting God for a healing miracle, please, now is the time. Quickly, come out here very quickly. Come out here very quickly. Those outside, hold on. Those outside, if you are in the overflow and you are here to come in. If you have come in, it's okay, you can come. But if you are yet to come, those in the overflow, the first overflow, just walk outside. Stand in front, outside at the projector. Those, the overflow at the roadside, just stand right there um, so that we can, we can make it fast. Those inside and those who have entered, come to the front quickly. Trusting God for a healing miracle. Pass your request to the ushers. If there are ushers here or protocol, please collect quickly. And then you can come quickly. Please, HP. Okay, Pastor Jimmy will be outside. He will be outside with um, Shade. Come, stand up. Oh, stand up. This pastor's wife will have to start walking now. Stand up in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, three of you will go outside in the name of Jesus. You will lay hands. Please come. I'll lay my hands on you. Let me lay my hands on them. It's a very good thing to expose them, Father. Please announce them. As they lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus. As they lay hands on the sick, let your healing power flow through them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So please, you go outside the gym. You can meet them. They can go outside here. And then, in the name of Jesus Christ. As they lay hands on you, please, if they don't ask you anything, don't worry. Just receive by faith. You don't have to start explaining. Our time is gone. Then, right here, Pastor Alpha, Pastor Femi, Benga. Um, Okay, promise you can also go. Mike, join them. Um, okay, no, no, no. Let's not do it that way. One, two, three. One, two, three. Will be enough. Okay, Mike, you can. Or Pastor Alpha, you can stay. Um, Pastor Femi, Benga, Mike, and promise you can go outside. You, you, you just position yourself and then you minister to them very quickly. And then, Pastor Fa, you can join me and then we'll do it in the worship team. You will help us. Please collect the request very quickly. Let's be very fast about it in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm praying a prayer now. Everyone, please participate and say amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that everyone sick here is declared free right now. And as hands are laid on you, let there be supernatural healing. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. At Calvary. At Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is very Burdens are lifted at Calvary. At Calvary. At Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Over now. Jesus is now.
Request Aaron is here, just, just indicate and then you'll drop it. Please don't disorganize the line so that we can hurry up. Because by the time you go back, they will have collected. Center of it all. It's you. It's you 
your hands on this request. Stretch your hands on this request. We are going to pray on them right now. Please stretch your hands on this request. In the name of Jesus, there is a God that answers prayers. If you are outside, don't worry. You are still on the healing line. It's the prayer for you. But for time's sake, let's stretch our hands in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to declare that every request, please make sure we have all the requests. The request, yes. Every request is turned into a testimony. Go ahead and begin to declare it. This is our year of triumph. In this year of triumph, we decree and declare. We decree and declare. Supernatural miracles. Are you praying? Are you praying? I say it again between now and miracle service February. Return with tears some testimonies. Every impossible situation represented here as touching your life, your finances, your health, your family. May the God of heaven turn it into a testimony. Anyone who must be cleared on the way for this testimony to come to pass, we clear them from the way. Anyone who must appear for this request to be testimonies, we command them to appear. Anything that must change for this to be called a testimony, we command it to change. In the name of Jesus, Father, we trust you. We have presented this before you. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pick it back as testimonies. In the name of Jesus, you will do this and you will glorify yourself. In the name of Jesus. Now lift up your hands and pray for you now. I pray in the name of Jesus and I pray this your life. Hard life, the life of hardship. I command it to end now from your life. I command it to end now from your family. I command it to end now from your life. To end from your family. The kind of opportunity you have never seen in the name of Jesus. Some of you, beginning from tomorrow, you will begin to see it. Believe what I'm saying. You will begin to see it in the name of Jesus. I don't know what recurrent event happens in your life. While you think you have escaped it, it happens again. I'm prophesying to you. It comes to an end right now. In this year of triumph, it comes to an end right now. It comes to an end right now. Please stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak favor to your life. In the name of Jesus, 
the God who by grace has favored this ministry in an unbelievable dimension, I pray, may the favor that God has put upon this ministry, I transfer it strangely to your life. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it right now. It begins to help her, please. My God, receive it right now. I release that favor. Strength favor. Strength favor. Strength favor. Strength favor. Men helping you. Strength favor. Women helping you. Believe it. Strength favor. Enemies helping you. Critics helping you. Mysteriously. I decree and declare whatever has refused to work in your life you try it is working for others you see it working for others but when it's your turn it does not work I command it to begin to work now I command it to begin to work now ladies I pray for you I don't know what has covered your glory. You are great, you are virtuous, but glory covered. I declare that from this miracle service, an unfailing of your glory, an unfailing of your glory. I want to pray for everybody, but specifically for our brothers. One of the blessings of this year is that God will bless your hands. If you don't believe it, just keep quiet. Don't criticize. Just keep quiet. But for as many who are trusting God, that God will establish you as a man, I prophesy to you, receive that unction. Receive that unction. The unction that establishes men to be able to take care of their homes, to be ready to be a man indeed. Ta, 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 ta. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Lift your hands and still pray. Some of us are victims of foolishness. Therefore, I pray for you. The spirit of wisdom, be baptized with it right now. Be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. I don't know what you have lost, but this is January. God has declared that it's a year of trial. Therefore, I command, between now and next miracle service, receive double restoration. Double restoration. Double restoration. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you for speed. See, let me tell you something. When speed comes into your life, when speed comes into your life, you will be surprised that within a short time, you will catch up and do a lot of things. I prophesy to you, where they have overtaken you, something comes on your life this night. Run like Elijah. Pursue. Kaparete kata. Pursue. Overtake. Recover all without fail. I prophesy. Pursue, overtake, recover all. Two more prophecies, and we are done. I don't know what distracted you from loving God. You were not like that. Your prayer life was a priority. Your word life was a priority, but something feared you off. I pray fresh impartation of hunger for God and the things of God take it now take it now fresh hunger fresh fire fresh hunger prayer fire word fire fasting fire prayer fire word fire fasting fire receive it in the name of Jesus I break the cause of spiritual laziness. Laziness to wake up and pray. Laziness to fast. Laziness to study. I break it from your life in the name of Jesus. 
And I pray for you. Last prayer point. Some of you have been obeying God in the secret. But the result has refused to manifest. According to the word. When you do things in secret. God rewards you openly. Is that not what the Bible says? I want to prophesy to you. I don't know who shut the door. I'm praying oh, And this is from my spirit. I know you have been touching. But there's, we have not seen the evidence. I know my God has helped you. I pray for you. And open testimony. Open proofs. Open results. Receive it right now. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Hallelujah. I'm hearing a song in my spirit. What can wash the days where people just cajole people you know when people come like this I know many of you have heard of the miracles many of you will experience it God wants us to experience it but let me tell you this I have noticed that most of those who live long are not miracle workers in fact most healing evangelists did not cross 80 it's true those who really really enjoyed the grace for longevity are people who are interested in the souls of people hallelujah now nothing wrong with miracles we're going to be experiencing the hand of God shortly but it came strong upon I've been concerned about the fact that there are people who are really going to hell it's not a lie it's true 
whether you believe it or not it's not the issue i can argue that there's no oxygen in the air it does not stop it there are some of you looking at me right now the overflow the truth of the matter is that at your current state without missing words it is true that it is not heaven you are going to the goal is not to scare you this is not the issue of scaring is is the truth there's nothing to scare you about it is true and books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life listen carefully whosoever's name it's on earth yet that we celebrate people apostle joshua selman whosoever's name was not found he was not asked why his name was not there if your name was not there that's the end of it are we together listen look this is a very serious serious issue there has to come a time in a man's life when you break your pride and say jesus i need you i don't care whether you have been a preacher for donkey years i'm not asking you how many sick bodies you healed i'm not asking you what name your members call you are we together there are people outside overflow one two three the truth is there are people who need jesus christ and a day is going to come whether we like it or not that day the very judge of the earth is coming it's coming if he said it in his word then it is true mm. come out and be serious with god be serious with god it's amazing how people come out for altar call they come out for altar call and you see them playing around and you know they are not serious i'm not saying you must cry but there is an attitude of seriousness you don't play games with god are we together i want you to run to jesus like there's fire on the mountain because there really is one two Apostle, I'm ready to break my pride and humble myself. It's not a call to condemnation. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, make your way. I've cried for my own life. My own life as a man of God. I've cried and rolled in the presence of God, crying for my own life. So don't, don't think that this is just some showmanship. Three, make your way. It's not by force. It's not compulsory. You can choose to sit down. But you can choose to say, let tonight be that night. Lord, you have to win this war over my life. Four. The Holy Spirit is still speaking to people. You may have money. You may have anointing. You may have cars. But let me tell you this. The Bible says, if your hope is only in this life, you are of all men of all politicians of all businessmen of all men of god miserable there has to be a cry from your heart lord i need you is a sign of humility is there someone still joining them very quickly i want to pray your coming to jesus means i am ready to close the door to all the friends and personalities in my life that are not ready to head my direction your coming to Jesus is a revelation that Lord I am ready to be serious with you it's not just you are coming as a preamble to receiving a miracle and then you run back no in plenty and in none leaving you is no longer an option in my life hallelujah I want to lead you some of you are crying let me tell you this if you have any loved one who is not saved i hope their names are in your prayer request because i know that some of us if i ask you what is on your prayer request now the only thing is wife husband promotion and and there's nothing wrong with that but let me tell you this is is funny but from heaven you will still see your loved ones in hell you will know they are the ones it's not that you are going to look at them and say i don't know i don't it's a lie you will know that this one is my mother this one now you can't do anything about those who have gone but there are people now you know in your neighborhood around your life it 
it is the Lord's desire that all men be saved. Please, if you are a pastor here, take the issue of soul winning seriously. Be careful. All these things we learn around in the name of mentorship. I believe in men. Be careful. Many people are veering off. There is, a, there is a path that brings power and grace. At the end of your life, you don't want to be a wise master builder. Be, be careful. The flamboyant does not necessarily mean God is there. Be careful. Especially for some of us who are younger ministers, we must be wise. You don't just swallow everything hook, line and sinker just because it is being done. No, sir. No, sir. There are churches where an altar call is not made for more than two years. Then one day they organize one hilarious, pretentious revival and then just draw one or two people. It's a joke. It's a joke. More than healing, more than miracles, more than getting a job, more than all of this is the eternal destiny of men. I am interested in knowing that I'm not praying for someone going to hell. It's a waste. I'm interested in knowing that I'm not teaching someone a principle to prosper when he's already gone to hell. It's a waste. I will teach you about the finances and the kingdom life when we know that your eternal destiny is secure. Those of us who are standing, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, just one prayer before I pray for them. Lord, make me serious with you. Make me serious with you. Please pray. It's a very serious prayer. There are some of us, you are not going to hell, but the truth of the matter is you are not serious with God. No. Mm -mm. There's nothing about God that, that can steal your passion. It's not priority. You see people function in the house of God and you say, oh, these ones, is because they are called into ministry. There's no such thing as that. It's your hunger. Especially for some of us sisters, we have to pray. Lord, make me serious with you. I don't care how many men like you. I don't care what they have told you. If you are not serious with God, your life is in shambles. It's true. Lord, make me serious with you. Let nothing else sustain the ability to take your place in my life. That's a very good prayer. Hallelujah. Come live in me. Oh my Lord. Take over Come live in me And I will rise On you You are a parent, yeah? When your children get to the age of discretion the moment they can think and they can understand, lead them to Jesus consciously. It is very responsible. Lead them to Jesus. If you have not done so as you go back home, don't just say, my children are smart. Call them. Preach the gospel to them. The moment they, are, they can think, they should be born again. Please, be, take let nobody stay in your roof. You have a neighbor that is squatting with you. He's not serious. It doesn't matter. No, it does. No, it does. No, it does. They can choose to reject Jesus. That's all right. No one goes to hell because he's a sinner. Everybody goes to hell because he rejected Jesus. That is the sin that takes men to hell. I rejected him. I had a choice, but I rejected him. Jesus, carry your load and walk out of my life. Those of you in front here, I truly appreciate you. Whatever you have in this life, 
if Jesus is not above it is useless let me just tell you the truth I want to lead you in an honest prayer I know some of you are crying overflow one two three those online please listen I'm not asking you whether you're a business mogul I'm not asking you whether you have how many degrees all those things are useless when you are no longer here I'm going to lead you in an honest prayer and I want you to pray from the depth of your heart listen to what you are saying and pray it loud are you ready now say after me with all your heart passionately Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart this night I make up my mind and I make a commitment to serve you and to live for you from today till eternity I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life I declare that my sins are forgiven I declare that the life of God eternal life is mine today Holy Spirit I receive you as the life of God in my spirit I declare that I'm a child of God forever let me pray for you father I thank you for these ones they have unashamedly come the Bible says that if you are ashamed of me before men I'll be ashamed of you before my father Jesus speaking Lord these ones have come opening their hearts genuinely to receive of your grace I ask you oh God you who is the helper of us all help them I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the righteousness of God is at work in you the grace to live a victorious Christian life the grace for passion and intimacy with God is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ every pain and every legal access the devil has over your life is hereby broken forever in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I congratulate every one of you not listen I know that some of you are rededicating your life to Christ there are a number of you those in here I just want you to walk out this way and then the various overflows I know that there are people attending to them they will have your details I praise you very quickly and you return back to join us in the service I salute you thank you so much for your courage your life will never be the same God bless you please direct them make sure someone is directing them make sure someone is directing them hallelujah amen please sit down hallelujah there are two ministries that I believe will be reignited in a fresh dimension two very great anointings I really believe with all my heart and and it's been confirmed from different people seasoned veterans of the gospel across the earth number one is the healing ministry I believe that the church has lost a major dimension of the healing ministry it's true even some of us that supposedly walk in it the truth is that most people have not experienced the full import of the healing ministry the healing ministry I'm going to be showing you a few things and then we'll pray we'll get to the business of the night the healing ministry is very important it played a major role the challenge was that most of the healing evangelists got to a point where they were carried away by the healing and no longer Christ and his purposes because the healing ministry is a means is a sign that points men to Jesus it's possible that because of the charismatism around the healing ministry you can veer off and your whole focus becomes the miraculous and not the Christ himself the second ministry that I believe will be experienced is the ministry of wealth and abundance it's true 
this wealth transfer that you've heard people say I believe that God has suspended that dimension for a reason because as a body we are not yet ready for that dimension the our perspectives about kingdom wealth and finance does not warrant God releasing that level of blessings because for many of us our hearts are still corrupt over the idea of money are we together the average person's idea about money is just some kind of um, is just a, a quest to get and buy nice clothes and nice cars and prove that I am successful there is a place for that but if that is the scope of your idea then you do not need any wealth transfer are we together yes so God must first walk upon our hearts it's the same way years ago there was a very strange manifestation of a lot of things that happened in Zaria angelic feathers gold dust silver dust you know people started having these strange encounters and one I remember one night the Lord told me said I'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry it didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn people will go to pray and for hours all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality and God said no if I don't take it away one demon will give it an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people and so God withdrew that experience God only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment he knows that when this reality reaches the people they will not abuse it until now as i speak to you there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so god will not release it until the body is taught the money is safer with bill gates is safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors because they have worked on their minds they are better treasurers for god than us so all it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming but not not some money monger kind of thing it won't come that way anyway i just thought to share that let's look at the ministry of jesus luke chapter 6 i study the gospels a lot because the ministry of jesus inspires me He's the greatest model that I have. And I like, to, I like to study his idea. What did he do? What was captured in his ministry? Luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 6 verse 17 to 19. This is Jesus now having the sermon on the mount. Okay, I'll just read it from here. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples a great multitude of people listen out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear now listen carefully the people came to hear amplified says to listen to him he came to hear him and to be healed there is a relationship between hearing and being healed they didn't just come to be healed they came to hear and to be healed verse 18 or still verse 17 to be healed of all their diseases 18 and they that were vexed with unclean spirits so we see the kind of people that came for Jesus' meetings those who were sick they were sick terribly diseased they came to listen to him there was something he taught them about listening to his words and the healing power of God so they came to hear and to be healed the second category of people we see they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed unclean spirits the source of their pain and their discomfort were the presence of unclean spirits and the Bible says, and the whole multitude, listen, sought to touch him. Why? For there went 
power out of him to heal them. I love the ministry of Jesus. So the Bible tells us why the people got healed. That there was power. Other versions say virtue. There was something that Jesus had that would leave him into the people. And the moment it entered them, they would discover that their sicknesses were gone. Are we together? Hmm. Acts chapter 10, when you read verse 38, Peter was teaching. That was a salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Listen, it says who went about doing good. Went about doing good went about doing good so we see other things that jesus did that were not captured he didn't just heal the sick alone he didn't just deliver the oppressed alone he went about doing good breakthrough is a good thing restoration is a good thing he went about doing good and then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus's ministry and and by the way I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry Jesus's ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven are we together now he said it is expedient that I go why so that the comforter will come it is to your advantage advantageous to you that I go because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come. Like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha. Now that mantle that was on Jesus, the Spirit himself, without measure, so that we can partake of that Spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the Father had sent me, this is Jesus speaking, the Father sent me, I now send you, as the Father sent me, both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The Father sent me with power, and every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, it's fraud. It is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and they're wonderful. But we expect the power of God to heal the sick. We expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results. At some point in this service, we should see the superiority of light over darkness. Is that true? At some point in this service, God should be able to step over your issue. To see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this. Just like that. Is that true? If that happens, then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of Jesus. But listen to me brothers and sisters, if this does not happen, we are wasting God's time. And we are wasting the time of God's precious people. That's why we prepare for all of the meetings, especially the miracle service. Because you have not just come to watch a man. You have come to see an extension of the ministry of Jesus. You have come with your requests. You have come with your medical reports. You have come with your pain. You have come with all kinds of oppression. You have come with all kinds of closed heaven. And you're saying, Lord, if you are the only one I know who can help me, let me tell you, your coming is faith enough did you hear what i said you're leaving your house to come is faith enough it's true like a patient goes to the hospital once you're in the hospital just leave the rest to the doctor 
Then the doctor begins to prescribe. And this is what is happening to us. An extension of the ministry of Jesus. Let's look at one scripture. Mark chapter 1, 21. Mark chapter 1 and verse 21. And they went into Capernaum, still the ministry of Jesus, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered the synagogue and taught. It's interesting how Jesus held his crusade. He would take out time, not just to preach, but to teach. Jesus knew that teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive. Are we together? If the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone, it, it becomes volatile. The people receive it and then it just evaporates. But when they are taught, it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received. You can lose something you have received. It's true. You can lose healing. Demons can leave people and re-enter them again. But when the word of God is taught, it gives you the basis. Are we together now? So Jesus taught in their synagogues. We're reading. It's, it's a long reading. Let's see how far we can go. Just keep, just continue. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. 23. And there was in their synagogue. I love Jesus. See how his miracle service was. As soon as he just finished preaching. It was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom. And there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit. And the demons began to cry out, 24. Saying, let us alone, what have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? We know who you are, the Holy One of God, and so on and so forth. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold your peace and come out of him. This is Jesus for you. This is Jesus for you. Because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual manipulating his intentions and jesus looked at him this does not reflect the kingdom and he brought that spirit out like it's going to happen to many people the forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing until they leave all these things are a joke when the unclean spirit had turned him he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him 27 we're reading down to i think it was 39 or so i just want us to walk through the ministry of jesus and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him let me tell you this when you command an unclean spirit and it goes, it is a big deal. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Doctors can treat sickness. They can cast out devils. Machines can show an elongated lung or heart, but it cannot show the spirit sitting there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? These spirits are living entities. They can hear. They have a system and a structure. They were designed to respect some people and disobey some people. Are we together? They understand ranking in the spirit. So when you issue a command, as Jesus did, and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion. Are we together? Yes, it is. It truly is proof of dominion. Look at Jesus used this. The people were astonished. They said our priests and rabbis didn't do this. They couldn't do this. I hope you know that while all the priests used to preach, that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing. But the words were not potent enough to force them to leave. So they kept coming service after service. May you not be a man of God that cohabits with demons. And that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting. And the demons that cause poverty, failure, whatever it is. You share the grace and they share the grace with you. And you go out. No sir. Haba. What then is the excellency of light over darkness? Your presence should discomfort the gate of hell. 
so well that there is no pretending about it that's why some of you bring people here you notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening they want to run away it's not them it's not them the devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again but tonight the devil is a liar it's too late really it's too late 28 and immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about galilee and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of simon and andrew with james and john let's see what happened and simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they tell him of her now jesus is healing we saw him cast out devils he's about to heal now and he came and took her by the hand i love jesus and lifted her up and how many how long immediately. immediately do you know if jesus did not touch her she would remain like that and you would think it's the will of god don't trivialize an anointed hand goodness jesus walks in and says i'm introducing something to this woman's body that until the arrival of that thing the condition does not change that contact the bible says immediately the fever did what that means the fever was a living thing it could move abba is it, are you not intelligent people the fever left pastor alpha left me before jesus came the fever was with her they gave it all kinds of interpretation jesus look at what jesus did he didn't talk he just touched the bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak just by making contact alone are you seeing that now some it was about the transference of virtue and it forced the spirit there was a separation that means the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you are you getting what i'm saying now yes that means that growth that swelling is a sign that there is something with you ah but the hands of jesus extended through us you see that I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you that means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body and just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go there is an agency that will separate you from that pile you will call it a miracle there is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated look at it immediately not slowly so the question is not whether you can be healed the question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit because when it happens the bible says immediately and she was so healed she went straight to the kitchen straight to the kitchen from a bed and he came and took her by the hand and brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set like koinonia now they brought unto him that means there was an information that had reached town that when we bring certain people to this man there was something about him that was able to heal them they brought unto him all that were what diseased and them that were possessed with devils see the kind of people that came to jesus as a man of god if these kinds of people are not coming to you it's not the issue of i'm not called into this ministry something is wrong because they should discern that the hand of god upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of jesus and should make them bring certain people there are there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again then you create it not everyone may be sick but let me tell you something everyone needs the hand of god there are some of us our heavens are closed totally and don't act as if it's not important nobody is favoring you no open door you are born again but your life and your door and destiny is closed can you trust god to open this door for you it's not by might it's not by power 
you heard the testimony of, of uh, joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her. Something made that uncle call, brothers and sisters. Because that uncle also has relatives somewhere. Everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him. What makes him to leave them and come to you? No. Are we blessed? One question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray. Are you truly tired of the situation? You see, there's something I think I was sharing with. I can't remember who I was sharing this with. I was saying pain. It was you, Jimmy. Pain is very important. Sometimes the only way to let people see your is allow that pain. Don't stop it because there are people if you have not been pushed to the wall you will not see the need for God for as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you you will not see the need to be serious so sometimes God deliberately allows it and that pain the day five of your children said daddy is this how we will continue you just get up and say I'm coming for koinonia today I'm, I'm tired of this that pain was an indication that something is wrong and that it needs remedy fast pain there are people who never run and come to God but you just press one side of your stomach and you just feel ah something is growing what is this next week the thing increased you told the doctor just touch it and say, ah, I don't want to tell you the name pain just say when is that miracle service said The power of God is real. It can produce miracles. It will produce miracles in your life tonight. Do you believe it? I expect that not only would God heal the sick, not only will he cast out devils. Listen carefully. I expect that tonight by his spirit, he will lift you out of certain captivities, lack of favor, delay there are some of us you are trusting God to return certain things that left your life for years whoever told you it cannot you heard the lady that said they stole her phone they came with machete and stole her phone I remember she sent me a text that they came to carry a machete foolish thieves they don't know that a body without a spirit is dead The same way you have been carrying a certificate that's the body where is the spirit component that's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin but when the spirit component comes let me tell you this god never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted a spirit entity must assist you even you if you meet a herbalist that herbalist is not alone there is a spirit assisting him you see that? Yes. Don't walk through life by your strength and power. Please help them. Life will be too hard for you. This is the mystery of hardship. Rejecting the assistance of the spirit. I would dare not do ministry without the spirit. What else will I be doing? But with God. With God. All things without him you are on your own but when you involve him and not only involve him go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder i'm showing you many of you are surprised the same surprise was in the bible they were astonished what manner of man is this astonished and then the man if he's wise will tell you look i'm not alone Jesus said, I'm not alone. All these miracles you see, I'm being assisted. Brothers and sisters, the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance. The realm of the spirit is in partnership. You can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside, shouting at overflow. No, no. Habba. Words are not hammer. But when the spirit is upon them, that word will enter you like a drug. And all of a sudden, you will find out that certain things will go. <laughs> It will work in Zaria, it will work in Lagos, it will work in London, it will work in Saudi Arabia, it will work everywhere. Are we together? Mm.
the spirits that oppress us must give way. I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive. The most important thing is not the ministrations as it were. The most important thing is creating this expectation. Many of us come and we are just hoping. Um, okay, God, I know you will bless me. In the name of Jesus, may God lift you. Amen. I just, well, it was a nice service. And you go back and nothing happens. You keep watching people come to testify. Blessed is she that believes, the Bible says, for unto her, not unto them, there shall be a performance. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord. I came here full of the Holy Ghost and I came here believing with all my heart. You are sick, get ready to be healed. Don't, don't, don't say, well, let's watch and see. Get ready to be healed. You are oppressed of the devil. You may not even know you are oppressed. You just know that nothing is working in your life. I want you to be tired and say, God, will you bring me here? So especially for those of you who came so far, Lord, will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that? There are some of you in ministry, you came to contact fire. Lord, will you leave me? Will I leave my members, my fellowship and come back here and go back? No evidence of favor. I believe him. I believe that he's a mighty man. I believe he's awesome. I have seen his hand. I have seen his power. And ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the same God yesterday, today, forever. I present to you the same healer yesterday, today, forever. I present to you the same deliverer. I present to you the one who took Joseph from the prison overnight. I present to you the one who turned Saul to the apostle. I present to you the one who turned Rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus. I present to you your destiny changer. I present to you your destiny maker. I present to you the anointer of men. The one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life. I present to you the prosperer. The one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child. I present to you the one who can give you influence, can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder, a specimen, an epistle of his hand. That's the God I present to you. I have given a very nice speech. We're about to step back and allow the king of glory ride over this place. And let me watch the mountain that stands before him. Let me watch Zerubbabel. Oh, no, no. He said, who art thou mountain? Who art thou mountain? Who art thou infirmity? Who art thou delay? Who art thou stagnation? Before Zerubbabel. He said, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain. Lift your hands, I want to pray. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. There is an impartation of the grace for favor. This is what the Lord is telling me. The grace for favor. The grace, I'm about to pray, for favor. Favor is a revelation that God has given me. My life is a testimony of that reality. I want to pray for you now. Believe. Believe as I pray. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now. Father. Even as you have revealed to me. From this main auditorium. To overflow one. Overflow two. 
overflow three and those online lord i release an impartation for the grace for favor receiving right now in the name of jesus receive that grace in the name of jesus receive that grace in the name of jesus i stretch my right hand and i decree and declare step into a new level of favor 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 we need favor in our lives most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve i say it again in the name of jesus every challenge in your life that only the favor of god can solve i stand before the god who has helped me and has helped this ministry i release upon you an oil of favor take it now in the name of jesus take favor take favor receive favor in the name of jesus christ a strange dimension of favor favor that will surprise you favor that will accelerate your life when a life listen to me when a life has no favor it is clear the proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life not the absence of money you can have money you can have intellect you can have a job but when there are no men in your life you don't have favor the proof of favor is not the coming of money the proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that the man that must show up in your life to validate the grace for favor i prophesy them upon you now i call them by prophecy in the name of jesus upon your business upon your job upon your projects may men arise to help you Hallelujah. There is the grace for favor. Those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that had been trending for a while. I traveled to Lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going, listen carefully, something is happening here. A young man just walked to me and held me and I looked at him and he said, sir, remember me. I said, well, I don't remember you. What's the story? He came here, Koinonia, with a property, his property, and carried it and gave me as a seed. I said, what for? I mean, you're a young man. What will you go and tell your wife? Brothers and sisters, from November till now, nine properties and one estate came to him. A young guy. Hamper. Is it charm? what is on you is what brings things to your life it's not what you want it is what is on you in the name of jesus that anointing that must come on you i declare that it comes on your head right now it comes upon your head right now producing strange results it comes upon your head right now it comes upon your head right now just follow me some of you don't know how you need favor you know you need favor but you don't know what extent I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor you will never be able to be happy on earth no I can you check let's check our lives the truth is for many of us there is no favor it's not that the helpers are not there 
there has to be something on you to bring them every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria not London Zaria here many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you nobody thinks about you God does not talk to anybody about you a gentleman I think one of these uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays and he stood to see me after the service and he said man of God my life is hard can you help me with some money and I looked at him I said you are not a wise gentleman I know you need money now but you should ask yourself the person giving you the money where did it come from the wiser prayer is for favor I said let's do an experiment I told him I said I will pray for you for favor return next Friday and tell me what happened if nothing happens I will give you money agreed he said yes and I prayed for him and he went brothers and sisters on Monday Monday that's the Monday after that gentleman sent me a text and he said his uncle that he's even fighting with their father that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school and he said nobody he said so why have you not been reaching me all of you these proud children and so on and so forth that he was going to start sending him money i said you you believe that that uncle just did it by his will listen this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you that's flattery this wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you enough to see that you rise it takes favor can i pray that prayer for you again in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god you have done your best you have done your efforts you have struggled it's almost killing you now receive the grace for favor receive the grace for favor may your life change by favor receive the grace for favor hallelujah it is favor that brings resources it is favor that brings opportunity there are many gifted people there's no one to reward them there are many nice people many wonderful musicians nobody to place a demand on their grace it's so annoying when you see someone you are better than but he has favor and you don't and yet you have to say yes sir her man did not think Mordecai was good enough but favor and he said everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai bow the knee Mordecai is passing yes a gatekeeper you may not like a person but when favor is on them it will veto whatever you think i pray for you again every door that must open in this season to validate favor i command it to be open now i command it to be open now listen you're not going to build a house by savings let me tell you the truth it's not in today's nigeria you're not going to buy a car by saving no I practice all these things you're not going to to settle and train your children just by saving money you will need a grace that can accelerate your results otherwise you will never be a giver you will never you can't be a giver just by saving peanuts 10 naira and 100 naira when there is a demand life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor you will be frustrated and that's how satan wants to trap men he will trap you and make your life miserable let's release this favor on our families you have received it for yourself but let it get to your family i pray for you in the name of jesus christ my father every family that is represented here by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be a release of favor let there be a release of favor favor on every family favor on every family listen 
sometimes eh, it is not warfare that destroys it is even how favor works favor can kill to make sure that one person rises some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make boasts and say for as long as we are there you must route your success through us if you attempt to rise without us you will not rise i declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family and dislodge everybody who wants to be god in that family hallelujah favor in one minute i want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak lift your voice begin to pray begin to pray participate lord i release favor concerning this job pray i release like a shield you surround us with favor like a shield pray make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus favor like a shield favor in my academics pray favor over my job Lord favor 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 hallelujah listen let me tell you the truth you see ba this prayer you are praying if this prayer is truly answered in your life this is how you will stand what is this this favor prayer you see there are people who have touched up this favor they can tell you favor is fearful in its operation of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carry the crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me let me tell you how you know it is favor listen favor is not one time when somebody just says hey Jimmy I want to give you water what that's just goodness favor is I want to keep blessing you I want to continue doing this many of us what happens is that we mistaken goodness for favor someone just appear once and just says look i want to help you and it never happens again when it is favor a process is ignited it keeps following like that it's true study the things in your life you'll be able to separate goodness from favor there are things that just happen one time but favor favor continues so I'm seeing fire on my hands and I want to pray because the Lord wants to bless the works of our hands listen whether you are on a job or whatever it is you see these hands you see they are it's a mystery it says the the hand of God it was with this hand God made man are we together now this hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you i want to pray I'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because for many of us who are getting results but our results are too small i stretch these hands the fire that the lord put upon this hand in the name of jesus i release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in i release i stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of
of Jesus Christ. You go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen. You go back with that hand. Listen, listen. Believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought. It's true. It's true. Why does God do these things? To give us rest so we can serve him. Why does God open doors to give you rest? Financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from Satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things. You never will truly be able to seek God when certain things have not been solved in your life. It's true. You can't give God your best when you are still thinking of what to eat. You are thinking of what to wear. But when God takes those things away, your prayer life becomes worship, not just hours of petition in the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow 2. There's someone, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on someone. Overflow 2. The overflow by the roadside. Bring the lady. Hello, him of night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Overflow to the overflow by the road. Please, quickly, we have to hurry up. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, him there is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Hello, him Thy kingdom come, thy will be. The Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord, but this is like, it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. The devil has put something in this lady's stomach. This lady you are holding. I command in the name of Jesus, remove that evil you have put now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm about to pray. And I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen. There will be such a massive, massive, massive deliverance. Now, let it not surprise you. I've explained to you what this thing is. It's a separation. You should rejoice when it happens. Because it means that you are entering a new season. 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 Para 
Rakato Sada Brashana Balanaba, Leka Proskana Barush, a new season. of the spirit is around this area a new season a new season god is breaking something here a new season a new season a new season someone is entering it right now a new season a new season young lady you are entering a new season a new season by the spirit a new season a new season a new season, a new season. A new season, something is breaking. Breaking. I don't need to walk everywhere. I'm just walking as the Holy Ghost is leading me. A new season, something is breaking. Breaking, breaking. A new season. There is a cloud of glory. There is a cloud of glory. A new season. No force can stand it in your life. There is an anointing here. There is an anointing here, a new season, something is breaking here, right now in the name of Jesus. Something is breaking here in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive it, something is leaving you. Something is leaving you, it must go. Shake it, take 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 it, I stretch my hand, something is breaking here. There's someone an anointing is coming on you. Breaking a limitation right now. In the name of Jesus. I command that spirit, leave that lady now. In the name of Jesus. You ready? 
lift your hands. I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural, whether the earth, whether fire, that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three, I command those ordinances set on fire. One, two, three. Let there be liberation right now. Every family covenanted to the waters, covenanted to the air, to trees. I set you free now. And I'm seeing or your state or your state this is the hand of God the sword of the spirit going to all your state bringing deliverance there are times that God moves this way in the name of Jesus I command whoever is from that region may the power of God begin to touch you now may the power of God begin to touch you now complete liberty complete liberty complete liberty Overflow three, please lift your hands. Just watch your screen and lift your hands. Overflow three. Don't worry, you, you, they, you, you don't have to bring them. The distance is far. Overflow three, just look at me. I see the angels of the Lord doing something there. At the count of three, overflow three, I want you to shout the name Jesus because I'm seeing swords. That's what I'm seeing. And the Lord is bringing a massive, massive breakthrough massive deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus overflow three are you ready I'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you right now in the name of Jesus everyone under any kind of oppression at the count of three shout Jesus one two three hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray for the sick shortly hold on guys hold on hold on hold on please i want to pray the lord is showing me something that is very interesting the lord wants to break cycles there are people every season certain things happen every september somebody must die every three three years somebody married must divorce in the name of Jesus, lift your hands. You don't have to ask whether or not you are involved. Don't worry, the anointing will look for you. I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus, the power that activates cycles, demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear God is not done with you I look at you and I see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if I don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you will start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I command that devil let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ every cycle over anyone's life are you ready to shout Jesus now at the count of three to surprise you what God will do. One, two, get ready. Three. The chain of circles. Be broken. Cycles. Cycles of failure. Cycles of miscarriages. Cycles of unfruitfulness. By the sound of the spirit. Be broken now.
Hallelujah. Be broken now. I want to pray. Um, please, this man. I don't know who the this man. Yes. Please quickly. We are soon going to pray for the sick. I may not have time to prophesy to individuals. I'm standing near this lady and I'm seeing a snake. This is what I see in the name of Jesus. I curse that devil. I'm not seeing a human being. I'm seeing a snake. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Overflow one. I'm seeing the power of God. This I just mentioned snake. And I was seeing serpents. Just moving at overflow one. Right now I'm seeing it's like a sword. Dividing those snakes. That's what I'm seeing. It's happening to people at overflow one. In the name of Jesus, let it be over now. Snakes and scorpions. The mystery. The mystery of snakes and scorpions. He said, I give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. Sir, I want to pray for you. I don't know whether you came here for us. Coming here, sir. You have been but, coming here. Uh, but I was tra I traveled before that. So I have not been coming. I want to pray for you yes, sir. if I don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you inside a coffin they have already closed you I'm not a prophet of doom I want to pray for you you love Jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you huh? yes, uh, is that true yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you yes, sir. that thing is a charm yes, it's sir. not a yes. charm yes. native yes. doctor yes, sir. Huh? Yes, that's sir. what will even kill you yes, sir. it's not going to solve your problem yes, sir. the people doing it are well meaning yes, sir. but the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you sir because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it yes, and you violate it will destroy you yes, sir. can I pray for you you have, you have taken something in your system now that will even destroy you listen let me tell you when you are pressed we are humans and we can be pressed to the wall going to the devil to get a charm is, is you are facilitating your destruction if satan gives you tea here he will hold a knife and stab you at the back father by the mercy of god i pray for this man let him not die in the name of jesus i close the gate of the grave over your life in the name of jesus both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms in the name of jesus we scatter that shrine into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you sir the Lord perfects you in Jesus name I pray something is leaving this lady oh dear she's vomiting I'm looking at her and I'm seeing something Agnes God is not done with that guy or that young man with blue Please, if you are not Agnes, don't come here. Please. Your name is Agnes. Where are you from? I need to pray for you. I'm seeing an attack on your life. This attack is coming from Calabar. Huh? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, I have to pray for you. Where are you from? Cross River. You are from Cross River? Yes, sir. Come. I must pray for you. Kai, there is somebody, the Lord is setting the person free. I'm seeing a friend going to a herbalist and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person. You are here now. In the name that is above all names. I'm serious. Don't think I'm just hyping you in the name of jesus whoever's name has been written by any demonic friend or whatever herbalist in the name of jesus because that person you keep seeing death dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of jesus i curse that spirit now i'm going to pray for you and then we are going to pray for the sick right now 
there is some serious deliverance I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit this is this is this is a serious father let this lady be free right now in the name of jesus christ come you this lady come you love jesus huh yes sir come you I, i'm not condemning you eh look at me you have to be very serious with god one two friends look at me god has delivered you many times you would have destroyed yourself huh you're a small girl you need to love god with all your heart please be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you i love you eh? i love you and that's why i'm telling you this you need you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up hmm? i'm not going to say everything i'm seeing but you have to be careful because it's god that saved you now i'm seeing something a virus anyway in the name of jesus christ father i pray for your daughter help her by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ 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 i'm standing and i'm seeing a tree and that tree is this lady and something that was planted and the lord is saying uproot it i uproot this thing now in the name of jesus christ i uproot it now the spirit of the lord is taking me to benway state i've never been there physically but i'm seeing benway benway and i'm looking and i'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down it's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees in the name of jesus christ if there is any family involved in this i command an uprooting every tree that has not been planted help them by my father every tree i see benway state in the mighty name of jesus let there be an uprooting an uprooting an uprooting an uprooting in the name of jesus let me pray for you my dear you are a nice lady but there's bad luck in your life very bad luck and the lord wants to help you father help your daughter in the name of jesus christ bad luck be gone now and forever in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ may the lord help you come my dear let me pray for you i'm about to pray for the sick now our time is gone in the name of jesus christ there are some my spirit is heavy to prophesy but because we have to i want us to pray for the sick so that i can just make those declarations we may not have time for one-on-one -on -one prophecy but i'm telling you god wants to touch touch a lot of people my dear i want to pray for you in jesus name the lord is rolling away the reproach in your family rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what i'm praying for you for i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head and the lord is saying i should tell you that is a new level of lifting you this lady looking at me i prophesy it over your life in the name of jesus christ who is this who agnes agnes where is she Abuja. Abuja, sir. your sister yes Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this lady. Where is she? Abuja, sir. She loves Jesus. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her. Eh? In the name of... Is she married? Huh? In no. the name of uh, whatever it is. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God help you. Mama, come. Let me pray for you. It's your season of breakthrough. Come. Is this your child? come boy come i'm looking at this boy and i'm seeing that god is going to use him this is a small boy yeah. boy how are you the, the boy doesn't even know but i'm going to pray for him samuel did not know that he will become a great prophet one day when eli he was just an innocent boy i'm going to pray for him 
Mama, please stand up. I will pray for you. Look at me, ma. Please don't be embarrassed. But the Lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life. This thing they call in house a wahala. God wants to take it from your life. You are a very sincere woman that loves the Lord, but this, this cause of hardship. Um, this woman loves the Lord with all her heart. Father, you, what's, what's the name of this boy? Riba. Huh? Lifted. Okay. Your name is Lifted? Yes. Father, I lay hands on Lifted. In the name of Jesus Christ, use him mightily. We are all products of your grace. Lift him and use him mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you this. The month of April is your month of strange breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ. The month of April is your month of breakthrough. Azuka, come. Lift the camera first. Let me pray for you and then you keep the camera. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing a big project coming for you. And this project is going to lift you. This is something that has to do with your snapshot. But God is bringing someone. It's been something you have desired that God will bring someone to open a door. And truth, you have been faithful. You have even been serving in this house. But I want to pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, lift him. Take him to that dimension of grace. I release that anointing upon you. It will no longer be an ordinary camera. I call forth men that will lift you. I command it so. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Open doors for you. Open doors for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. This lady. Um, Sarah. Come. There is witchcraft in your family. I have to pray for you. This thing is affecting everybody in the family. Everybody. Everybody. Not There's no exception. Everybody. Lord, take away this plague of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wonderful people, beautiful ladies, but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell. Jeketos kata pakaria kato zibranda kata. Jebros katos kete katambria kata. In the name of Jesus Christ, I silence the voice of the accuser. I silence the voice of the accuser. I silence the voice of the accuser. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are going to pray for the sick now. Listen, I know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting god for healing and miracle let me pray for this lady how many of you have your prayer request now lift it up ushers your prayer request those online make sure we collect it this this lady let me have her hands lord jesus let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of jesus christ just hold her gently should be fine submit your prayer request quickly now we are going to pray for the sick don't allow any nonsense remain in your body no matter how small make sure you insist that it leaves make sure you insist that it leaves we are going to be very fast please we'll be very fast now let me say this when you stand to receive healing don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping. Let your heart be open. Are we together? Number two, accept whoever is praying for you. Ask you what is wrong. You don't have to say, okay, it is my ears. or my... Don't worry. Don't worry. The people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the spirit will touch you. It doesn't matter what auditorium. It's a corporate grace that is working here. Hallelujah. And for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening, make sure you are praying. Because I'm, I'm literally sensing as if I want to throw up. It's the spirit of prophecy. There's, there's something that the Lord is putting in my spirit to release. And that's why I want to pray for the sick quickly. So that we'll pray this prophecy. If we do this, I'm satisfied in this service. We have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time. Hallelujah. Jesus. Someone please help with collecting the request. Make sure that even those at the extremes of the road... Their requests are collected. Please, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. By the ministry of the Spirit. Several people serving as contact points. But we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick. Lord, your people have come. Some of them with incurable diseases. Some of them with all kinds of devils. I decree and declare 
that your anointing will prevail over every challenge let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people pray spiritualize yourself make sure that you are submitting your requests and make sure you are praying thank you jesus my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make me just like you my beautifier beautiful. you have taken away Taking away the pain Taking away the pain Make my life so Make beautiful my life so beautiful My beautiful my beautiful You have taken away Taking away the shame Taking away the pain Taking away the pain Make me just like you Make me just like you Oh my beautiful My beautiful You have taken away Taking away the shame Taking away the pain Taking away the pain
I'm all in you. All in you, say my trust is in you. Uh huh. Lay on up to die. My trust is in you. Hey, ancient of days. My trust is in you. Serkin to the My trust is in you. Oh, I put them all in you.
please make sure make sure everyone's request is here in the name of Jesus February, we look to you again to surprise us. Lord, represented here are the requests of people from several nations of the world and several across this nation. In the name of Jesus, Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer. So Lord, I transfer the trust of your people to you. The one who is able to meet every need and on the strength of the grace that only comes from you and in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the resurrected lamb the one who is most victorious I prophesy and I turn every request here to become a testimony in the name of Jesus Lord as I walk through these requests in the name of Jesus that is exactly how your people walk through every challenge every challenge every challenge no matter what it is i decree and declare that the grace to triumph above it is released in the mighty name of jesus christ listen to me no matter what it is no matter what it is provided it found its way here in the name of jesus christ the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony. The same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony. There are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered. May they lack the sleep. There are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered. May they be promoted. There are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered. May they be laid to rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. If they are still praying for you in any of the overflows, don't worry. You can just connect with them while I pray for you. By the grace of God, you will not write your request twice. I thought I was done but I just felt drawn again to it whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere may the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you as long as God grants me the grace I will never stop prophesying over you. It is the greatest thing I think I can do. If I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding and my level of alignment to God, I may not be able to accurately address everyone. But when it comes to prophecy, everyone can receive. Are we together now? Wherever you are, you can receive. You've heard the testimonies. You've seen the things that happen. The Bible says, everyone who speaks, let him speak according to the measure of grace. 
there are some things this anointing can do and let's trust God that it happens in your life let's pray lift your hands father in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that for everyone here who started this year in tears already that from January February you've not known joy I declare that as this week ends that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too the Bible says no weeping endures for a night it says but joy comes with the morning I decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say Lord I've seen you bless me but not this dimension may the God I serve release it to you anyone here jobless or trusting God for a better job in the name of Jesus between now and March miracle service return with your miracle job return with your miracle job return with your miracle job anyone here due for promotion and whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is you've been kept at a level in the name of Jesus I open the doors for you rise to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ every manifestation of delay in your life others move forward but when it gets to your turn something just clamps you in one position or slow progress slow progress is as destructive as delay I command speed to your life I speak speed to your life I prophesy speed to your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life in the name of Jesus this is the season where all those doors are closed forever I pray for those in business here I speak over it the grace for multiplication let it come upon your business in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are trusting God to correct certain things in their lives it may be results for students it may be something it may be a mistake of the past you've seen God correct things in strange ways here I command supernatural correction for you for every student here that the result you are holding is not your real result I don't care how long in the name of Jesus the son of the living God we correct it right here anyone here involved in any kind of project building project whatever major project you or your loved ones I decree and declare the finishers anointing comes upon that project in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray over your finances listen let me tell you this the Bible says believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established he said believe in his prophets so shall you prosper if you truly believe God will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you I give you two weeks from today in the name of Jesus Christ that between now and the next 14 days let something notable happen to your finances listen I don't want you to think as I'm praying you are thinking oh God will use a B leave whoever God will use to him I'm not talking business in the name of Jesus I say it again between now and the next 14 days may the lifter of men surprise you in your finances hallelujah every gift of the spirit that you had once seen in your life and for some reason 
is either depleting in the grace for dispensing it or not there again i prophesy supernatural activation right now supernatural activation right now the supernatural grace for soul winning drawing people to god a strange grace that will not give you peace until people are coming to jesus through you i release that grace over you i release that grace over you i release that grace over you take that grace now the grace to validate signs and wonders that through your hand listen not just through joshua selman in the name of jesus those hands that are stretched towards me i prophesy to you the unction to walk in strange miracles receive it in the name of jesus the grace to reproduce the miracles in this house i release that grace young and old male or female receive it in the name of jesus i speak over your life that as you utter words concerning the destinies of men you will watch them come to pass with your very eyes in the name of jesus christ whoever needs to make peace with you i decree and declare the grace of god compels them to make peace with you hallelujah whoever has been directed by god to bless you and the devil is stopping them from obeying god is not necessarily financial it may be to bless you with an information access opportunity whoever is supposed to bless and lift you and in the name of jesus the devil wants to stop them i cleared the way for your contact with them in the name of jesus anyone here who needs an urgent breakthrough maybe something that has to do with house rent or maybe something that involves the police just something that if god does not intervene the embarrassment is going to be serious i pray that between now and sunday the god that i serve you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but brothers and sisters may my god step in and surprise you We're rounding up. Whatever has covered the glory of God upon your face so that people cannot see and partake of that grace and also reward you, I tread that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I pray for any and everyone here suffering from any kind of barrenness in the name of jesus christ by next miracle service you come back pregnant i say it again by next by next month miracle service you return with your baby in your womb in the name of jesus the spirit that makes you see what you want but never hold it is close to you you see it they promise you and say by tomorrow i will do something then in the night something happens in the name of jesus everything your eyes have seen i put it in your hand everything your eyes have seen i put it in your hand hallelujah finally i call your destiny helpers from the north the south the east the west whether they are in this country or outside this country i don't know how god will make them meet you but i declare they must meet you in the name of jesus they will not only meet you they will bless you in the name of jesus they will not only bless you they will continue blessing you I multiply dreams and visions and encounters in your life 
whatever has choked away your prayer life you used to pray for two three four five hours now you pray for 10 15 minutes you are drowsy you are tired it's an attack it is an attack it is the devil you used to be consistent but right now you wake up in the night you pray for 10 minutes you are snoring back in the name of jesus tonight let there be revival upon your prayer life revival over your prayer life the appetite to study the word you once had it but it went away and for some of you you've not read your bible since last friday it's not that you don't want to the grace to make it happen is no longer there i command tonight may that fire for the word come upon you hallelujah for all your loved ones who are connected to you whether they are born again or not because you came here tonight i stretch my hand may the grace and the blessing that came to you may it get to them too in the name of jesus christ give jesus a clap